So I love sailing and I love mechanical things and I you know, enjoyed my time at school. Then during university we met a whole lot of guys that did a lot of caving and climbing. Uh, so that was all through New South Wales. Every weekend we go away caving. And I loved the journey. I loved travelling from somewhere to somewhere else. So we'd start somewhere and you had to work out how to get to the other place. And you had to get to the other place in a, in a machine. So it was a cross between a, a, a thing that was interacting with the world and I loved that adventure. But I had this dream of, of flying. So I did a few flying lessons and I learned to fly um, and really absolutely loved it. When I couldn't fly because I couldn't afford to fly, I could think about flying. So I used to think about flying, read every book I could find. And then of course, you know, I thought well, I need to design an aeroplane. So I, I had a, an aeroplane design in my head that I started to work on and then that, then that needed an engine. So then I started to design an engine. Early on realised that two cylinders wasn't really enough and we really needed to be a little bit more. So why not make it three? Why not make it a radial engine? And then I found out all about radial engines and I absolutely love radial engines and, and their inherent simplicity. Why don't we make it like a modern car engine and have three different cams and, and, and push rods and, and, and a simple engine? So my business at the time, Bespoke Engineering, was coming along, was, was growing slowly um, and you can make a living but you can never afford, you can't afford to really develop an engine. Got a few other people involved uh, and then met Louis Burke while I was getting a casting uh, to look to cast some of the parts of the engine. Um, and he loved the engine and then after a few years we talked and then he, and he, he's invested in the business and it's gone from there. Um, my, my dad loved cars and he had, he had Ferraris and Porsches and different things like that. So I was exposed to cars the whole time. So, so we came over to the classic Adelaide 12 years ago or something and, uh, and in, in one of the tour events and absolutely loved that. I thought, this is, this is fantastic. This is just like sailing, this is just like flying. I want to do this, you know, this is just brilliant. Before we did it in a 944 and it, we did it in, in a Ferrari and absolutely loved it. People would say, all these shiny cars, they go, well that's fine, but I'd rather a car with wind up windows and a gear stick and, and to really interact and enjoy driving the car. And early on with the radial engine, we realised that it was, all, it was always an aircraft engine, but one of the first things we realised that we could, with a, a small change, we could fit it into cars. And it was all about an engine that people could enjoy and understand and build and interact with as well. Get the engine and put it in the vehicle, or they could get a kit and, and build the car. Up. So a lot of people get what the engine is and they just, inherit, they just love the engine first off. Start it up and they just say they absolutely love it. I think it's a bit of a common thread between a lot of people who enjoy cars is they, is they perhaps they weren't good at sport. In a car or a vehicle or a boat or a yacht or a kayak or something, they can interact with a machine and really dance with the machine. You're dancing with a machine in a natural world that's always changing, so you're looking around the corners to see what's going on, um, and, and you, know, you get to play with the thing in the meantime, so it's, it's heaven as far as I'm concerned. We've had to, uh, the, the car had a full roll cage, so we've had to unmodify the car to make it road um, legal and road registered, so we're going through a, a process of doing that. But that, that involves removing the cage and changing the cage and, and making a few changes to, to meet the South Australian regulations, and that's, that's good because we're getting, we're getting tooled up and rigged up to be a proper thousand engines a year engine maker. Most car engines now, you, you lift the bonnet up and have a look inside. There's so much going on, you can't work out what anything does. Um, whereas in the old cars you look in there and you go, well, that's a, that's a battery and that's a distributor and, and that's, you know, that's this and that. So we're building the engine for the people who want to get what's going on with the engine. Started with a blank sheet of paper and we're developing an engine. So it takes 12 of us to do it, plus also what, you know, great suppliers and things like that. So all of us are working together to get the engine right and all of us are working together as a team to get the car you know, ready to go in the rally and to, and to run in the rally so everyone's part of it. One person, might be, one person might be lucky enough to drive but everyone else is just as big a part of it. So it's a, it's a great feeling when, um, when it all comes together and you get back at the end of the day and nothing's broken or nothing's broken that you can't fix and the, you know, the car's still good and you can drive it again another day and uh, everyone gets an exhilaration out of it. And Tarmac Rally is a great chance to test the car on different road conditions um, and, and, drive, and drive the car really hard. We, we had the, the Zombug in the rally last year. Getting the car ready for the rally is just like getting the engine ready. Um, so there's a lot of parallels between the development of the engine and, and getting the car ready. We've got a um, bunch of enthusiastic guys at work, so we need people, you know, someone to drive, someone to navigate, someone to follow us in a support vehicle. 
um, someone to, to, to film us and things like that. So when we're out on the road, we're meeting other teams that are doing the same thing. So um, you've, got, you've got the same teams looking at their cars and you've also got uh, um, other enthusiasts coming along just to see the great machinery that's, that's out and to have a bit of a look. So what we've got is fairly unique and people look in the back and they've just got no idea what they're seeing. And uh, it's great to be able to show that off. And it's also great to get feedback from people who know what they're talking about with engines. You go to a lot of these things and people really don't know what they're talking about. But um, you've got a lot of people with a lot of motorsport experience coming up and, and saying that we're doing the right thing. It's really good. So we, we enter the Zombug in the, in the Spirit Tour, which is um, closed roads, 130 km an hour speed limit. So you're not racing, but you're driving, you're trying to drive as fast as you elegantly can within the speed limit. Uh, and it's great to, um, you know, to do that. And of course, you're seeing the road for the first time as you go around every corner. So you've really got to you know, work it out as you go and drive safely uh, and get used to driving, um, you know, having a road all to yourself. At the lunch stops and before and afterwards, you get to know everyone in your group. Everyone talks and everyone, everyone chats and it's a really great event. The closed road rally gives us a great opportunity to really to really test the engine and, and the car as well. So we've got a, a 1972 um, commuter vehicle that was never designed to, to you know to go fast. So we've made another number of modifications to the Zombug to and we've lowered it down and put uh, anti-sway bars and stiffened it up and changed the tyres and things like that. It's still a handful um, and it's still a classic old car. So it's not like a modern car where it's got traction control or something. So you've got limited braking and things like that. But gives us a really good opportunity to really give the engine a test and things like um, you know will a clutch will a clutch hold up will a flywheel hold up and things like that so we're limited to 120 kilometers an hour but the roads are so twisty that you really you know you rarely reach that speed but you, you know you're hammering along as as again as fast as you can sort of safely and elegantly do and, and it's a real challenge to get to know the engine and the car so you can, you, you can get it around the corners elegantly. You know you're not going, you know, you're not winning and you're not the fastest car and it's not a race, but you're still, you're still working against yourself or working with yourself to see how well you can drive. And it's a fantastic feeling when you finish the stage and, and you know that you've gone, you've, you've gone through the stage well and safely and fast uh, in, in, in something that you've created yourself or the team has created. So you've got a vehicle that's an unusual vehicle put together with an engine that we've designed and built. So to get it all together and to go around is just an absolutely fantastic experience and really exhilarating. So I, I really enjoy Tarmac Rally because it's, uh, it's a real challenge and it's quite different. You've got to look at the corner, work out what's going on, you get a bit of input. Of course, we've, you know, we've been on some recce stages so we've got an idea of a few of the really tricky corners, the ones that tighten and, and catch you, but you've really got to be with it and drive. You can't, you can't drive uh, averagely, you've really got to be completely switched on and at the end of the day you're completely exhausted but exhilarated at the same time. We've got a dyno here that we test the engine in in a fairly controlled way and we can load it and unload it and do things like that but the engine doesn't see anything like what it sees when you're out on the road so you've got changing road conditions, off-road rally guys you know they'll throw a bit of gravel onto the corner so you've got, you've got corners and potholes and, and long climbs and descents and things like that so it's really testing out the cooling systems, the brakes uh, and particularly the clutch and the flywheel because you're, you're hammering along um, you know, not always changing you know, as elegantly as you can. Um, but it's fantastic and, and you get to really feel what the engine can do. I mean, the, we've found that the engine is very, very talky, so um, you can almost hold it in third and, and, and really haul yourself around the course. In Adelaide, we're absolutely blessed with the most beautiful roads to drive up through the Adelaide Hills and, and this rally is an opportunity to find some of those roads. A lot of us know, the, know some roads, but we don't, find, we don't know them all until we, until we get the rally book. So lots of early mornings before work sometimes we'll go up for a for a drive just to get to know the stages. Really watching for corners that can catch you, which is the tightening corners and things like that. So we have a spirit of driving the, up in the hills, and but because the roads are so twisty, I mean, mostly you're with, you know, I mean, you, you're on the speed limit because it's hard enough to drive the, the things on the speed limit anyway. Um, the wreck is fantastic, and then you can stop and have a coffee and review what you've done and what you've learned and um, and what you do differently, and make some notes uh, in the book, and then do it all again. And so when it all comes together, it's an absolutely magical moment. And, like I said, you, um, you go, go and look for that moment again.